upon uh, what Mr. Franks was talking about, the case involving the Holy Land Foundation. You mentioned the Dallas Morning News article. I have a copy of it here. I've also got a copy of the Politico article. And the person you're talking about is Jim Jacks, who is the interim U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Texas because the president has not made a nomination for U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Texas. So as long as uh, Mr. Jack stays in the good graces of the president, he serves at the will of the president or of the judges in that area, uh, he might even get the nomination if he does a good enough job from the president. He serves at his will. So let's, let's go to this. Uh, are you aware that this same uh, career prosecutor that you'd mentioned filed pleadings in the case before Judge Solis and before the Fifth Circuit where he supported the decision of Judge Solis that there was evidence to keep the unindicted co-conspirators listed because some of them were wanting to be eliminated as co-conspirators. He filed documents with the court, and I'm rather sensitive as a former judge and chief justice to lawyers filing things and saying things they don't believe because it seems that what the position Mr. Jacks is taking now, which could be viewed as supportive of the president's position uh, on some of the people and some of the organizations that are unindicted co-conspirators uh, are inconsistent with his position in his pleadings. And I have copies of those as well. But the judge found, after reviewing Mr. Jack's pleading, that there was plenty of evidence to keep them in as unindicted co-conspirators. Now, if a lawyer files something that he doesn't believe and he knows he doesn't believe it, some judges think it's a fraud upon the court that requires punitive actions to be taken. So I'm also aware that when someone makes a statement to the Dallas Morning News, even if he believes it's not true, though it may help him in a political appointment, there is no actionable punitive measures that may be taken. So I wonder which Mr. Jack's opinion we're relying on, the one that's the interim that possibly hopes to be nominated or stay in that position or the uh, one that filed pleadings before the court. Now, are you aware that uh, one of the unindicted co-conspirators is the Islamic Society of North America, ISNA? Uh, were you aware of that? I don't have at my tip fingertips all the unindicted co-conspirators, but there's not an inconsistency in the what well. Wait a minute. Position that the my time is so limited, I have to ask questions and get short answers. The FBI has recruited through the ISNA magazine. ISNA has advertised in FBI publication in their in their uh, publications, and even in the, the White House's own Deputy Assistant National Security Advisor went out and spoke and and met with and spoke out at the, let's see, the All Dulles Area Muslim Society, or short for that is Adams, ironic, but uh, Deputy National Security Advisor Dennis McDonough, even in his opening remarks, thanked the president of ISNA, and that thank you is on the White House uh, website. So I'm wondering... Uh, when you say that no, you nor anyone else, as I understood, in your department assisted at all in the decision not to pursue prosecution of the most important funding case for terrorism in American history, do you need time to reflect on that? Or can you absolutely be certain that no one in your department had any consultation with Mr. Jacks or anyone making the decision in this case before the decision was made not to pursue it? I'm not sure that's the question that I was asked, but beyond that, the notion... Well, that's the question I'm asking. Well, here... It went beyond Mr. Franks. That's the question I'm asking. Well, you, know, you see, now you, you asked me one question, you're saying... No, your question is what now? You, am I referring... My question is, very specific, is there anyone in your department 
who consulted with Mr. Jacks or whoever made the decision before the decision was made not to pursue any of the unindicted co-conspirators in the Holy Land Foundation trial. My understanding that, in fact, there was contact between Washington national security professionals and the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, in Texas in that regard. But one thing... Are those Washington national security professionals part of your department? Because that was the part question. Of the national security division. But one thing I... Are they under you? Yeah, the, the National Security Division is part of the United States Department of Justice. Did they consult with you in any way? No. All right. Thank you. I see my well, time. Well, one thing I want to say is that I think it's grossly unfair. You've cast aspersions on a person who I don't know, um, who has served, I understand, the United States Department of Justice and the people of this country quite well for a good number of years. And you've implied that he would take a position in order, a position in a case, in order to maintain a position as uh, an acting U.S. attorney or to become the U.S. attorney. These are the kinds of things that, you know, will get reported in the newspapers. People don't know um, this gentleman. They'll wonder about him. And I think that's, that's a very unfair thing to do, given the fact that I don't think there's any basis for the assertions that you have made. Wait, now, wait a minute. And without, You're saying there are no basis the for the assertions? The recognized for an additional 30 seconds. No basis for the assertions that he said one thing in the pleadings before the trial court and the same things before the pleadings in the Fifth Circuit, and yet he comes out and says something entirely different later that these there's no evidence to support that. And basically what he's telling the Dallas News, there was no basis for a case there. And you're saying, I have no basis for saying that? I got the Dallas News article. I've got the pleadings he filed. That's what I'm basing that on. No, what you, you, it's not inconsistent. His saying that there is a basis to keep this, these people, these organizations, as unindicted co-conspirators. Have you looked at the documents that were made available in this case before you say that I'm being unfair by making allegations? Have you looked at the evidence in the case? Here's ISNA. Here's documentation of the money they provided, which ended up supporting terrorism as found by the court. And you're saying I have no basis for saying what I did? There is a basis for what he said before the Fifth Circuit and before the trial court. And so I don't appreciate the allegation that I am making unfounded allegations. I'm just saying, reply, re responding to what you said, you essentially said that he would take a position in order to maintain a position. That's certainly what you implied. I raised the issue. <laughs> and, and, sir, I don't know how many cases you've ever tried in court or prosecuted, but I can assure you if you tried a case and you had someone – with the impeachment material that was available for Mr. Jacks on his inconsistencies, and you didn't pursue it, you would not be an effective trial lawyer. These Gentlemen's are basis for impeachment of his stating that there was no politics involved because there was no case there. Chairman's time has Chairman, expired. Chairman, uh, uh, what the, the Attorney General was trying to explain why there was no inconsistency, and he kept getting cut off. Could the Attorney General... Uh, respond to the to the question. I, mean, yep. serious I was responding to the allegations about me having no basis for my statement. Well, can the attorney and I deserve to have a chance. Does the attorney general have anything to, to add? Uh, I was simply saying that the notion that the filing of something that says that these people organizations should be treated as unindicted co-conspirators is not inconsistent with this notion that there is wasn't political pressure brought to bear on that decision. I don't see how one necessarily affects the other. Okay. And, you know, I'm going to stick up for my people. That's what I'm doing. You know, I'm not going to let people who work in the United States Department of Justice have their characters um, assailed without any basis. Now, that, you know, might be something that people in, in this committee feel are, is easily done. It's not going to happen as long as I'm Attorney General of the United States. Okay. It's not going to happen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, now, Mr. Chairman, I should have a chance to respond since there were allegations made about me. I, but I do I, appreciate I, the Attorney General now letting us know that Mr. Jacks is one of his people. Thank you. Okay. As are the 114,000 other people who work in the United States. Thank Department you both. Uh, the, so he is the, part of your uh, department. 
These are my people. The, thank you both. 104 the gentleman from so people Florida. in your department did make that the decision not to prosecute. 